I'm originally from New York State. I've been here in Arkansas 16 years, but one of the things I was excited about when I came here was the length of our growing season. Because in New York, we raced to uh, get stuff going so that it was big enough before it went into winter, like strawberries. Um, here, you know, our challenge has been how do we make the cash flow last longer? And so now, between the high tunnels and the pumpkins, which really the, the strawberries mark the beginning of my season. We start with strawberries sometimes as early as February, begin to have cash flow with them. They can carry me into June. We segue right into blueberries and blackberries. You know, we're doing you pick with the blueberries and blackberries and folks are coming and picking their own and we're taking all sorts of them over to our store and selling them. So, you know, that takes us up to about July 1st and then We've already started to pick some vegetables, but vegetables are carrying us through. Oh, we start to pick asparagus in back in April, and then we move into the other vegetables, and they, they carry us through the summer, carry us until we really start to slow down in September. But then this pumpkin patch and our, our corn maze, they give us you know another boost that takes us through the month of October right up to the 1st of November. So now we've closed that gap where... You go back before I had high tunnels, before I did pumpkins, your income gap was about May 15th to about September 15th. And then you were pretty well done. Now we're going from tail end of February to the tail end of October. And you've got November, December, January, February, and then you're back into cash flow. So on a small diverse farm like this, you know, the, the, the pumpkins are a real boost. They, they give us one more thing to carry us just a little further. It's an interesting thing because in our business, you've got one set of clientele that buys your fruit and some of them buy your vegetables too. You got some that do it all. But the fall is a totally different crowd because now you're, they call it agritourism now, but, but now you're, you're appealing to people who are looking for outdoor entertainment. And this is a great opportunity to get people to your farm so they see what else you're doing, but they come for fun for the kids or whatever. And we, uh, we started, we opened a store on 7. You know, where we're located here, we're, we're two miles off a highway. We're seven miles from town. Um, we always had good results with our fruit. We found that people would come to our farm to get that fruit. When we'd get to vegetables, we either had to take it to farmer's market or find another way to market it. So several years ago, a place came available, and so we bought it and converted it to a produce stand, but that's been a real plus for us uh, because we get exposure for our fruits, for one thing. It's an outlet where we can take them to, but it, it really has helped our vegetable sales a tremendous amount because people will come to our store. My wife and I have talked a lot about this type of business, and if I was advising a young person, we've carved out an acceptable business here, but it's challenging in rural America where your cross sections of people are smaller. You know, you go to a major metropolitan area, let's say 5% of your people buy local produce. If you've got a population of 100,000 people, your numbers are going to be much greater. We're in a county that has less than 40,000 people, and so it's challenging that have enough people that will buy from us. And so it's, it's one of the things that makes us have to be as diverse as we are. We have to have a lot of pieces of the pie in order to make up a whole because all the slivers are smaller.